Good morning, Little Masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Let's get started with Week 17's Word Nerd Wednesday. Now, tomorrow on Third Age Thursday, I'm going to be taking a look at the appendices, specifically Durin's Folk. So maybe it's time to do a Word Nerd Wednesday on a word closely associated with the dwarves of Durin. Interestingly, this word has the distinction of being the very first Elvish word to have entered the Oxford English Dictionary. Now, honestly, you should probably have already guessed the word. There aren't too many Elvish words associated with Doran's folk. The word is Mithril. Now, according to Ring of Words, Mithril first appeared in a supplement to the OED published in 1976. After all, the OED is a really, really, really big dictionary, so they update it in supplements instead of creating an entirely new edition of the dictionary. It's defined in the OED as simply name given by J.R.R. Tolkien to a mythical precious metal, with the earliest recorded usage of it being a 1944 letter to Christopher Tolkien. Now, after the publication of The Lord of the Rings, the word Mithril just took off. It has appeared, either spelled the way Tolkien did it or sometimes with a Y, in just about every single fantasy game that's been released since then. Dungeons & Dragons, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, EverQuest, Elder Scrolls, Diablo, Guild Wars, and even the Bard's Tale. Does anybody except me remember that one? Many of you might not remember Bard's Tale as it's pretty old, 1985. I remember using graph paper to make maps as I went through the dungeons on my Commodore Amiga, but I digress. As we'll talk about later, the coat of Mithril itself appeared in the first edition of The Hobbit, but Tolkien didn't call it Mithril until he was writing The Lord of the Rings. The coat at that point was said to be simply silvered steel, all the way until the third edition of The Hobbit, which was published in 1966. Now, the name Mithril actually comes from Sindarin myth, meaning gray, like Mithrandir, the gray pilgrim, and Ril. R-I-L, which is both Sindarin and Quenya, and it means brilliance, as in Silmaril. Now, as Mithrandir says in Fellowship of the Ring, the metal was also known by other names, including Moria Silver and True Silver. The authors of Ring of Words point out that True Silver recalls Quicksilver, which literally means living silver, which of course was a medieval name for Mercury. Now, fortunately for Bilbo, that similarity seems to be a name only, I can't imagine he'd want to wear a coat made of mercury, not very good for his health, and frankly, a rather ineffective armor, one might imagine. Now, that's really it for the Word Nerd part of Word Nerd Wednesday, but that would make for an awfully quick episode. So I thought I'd at least mention a few other things other than Bilbo's overpriced coat made of this valuable metal. First, in Book 2, Chapter 1, Many Meetings, Bilbo, rather cheekily, sings a song about Elrond's father, Eärendil. In that song, we learned that after Eärendil successfully reached Amon and spoke with the Valar, a ship then new they built for him of mithril and of elven glass, with shining prow, no shaven oar, nor sails she bore on silver mast. The Silmaril is lantern light and banner bright with living flame, to gleam thereon by Elbereth herself was set, who thither came, and wings immortal made for him, and laid on him undying doom, to sail the shoreless skies and come behind the sun, and light of moon. I'm still trying to figure out how to read that properly. But the point is, Vingalot was made of elven glass and mithril. Now, much later, when Gandalf and Pippin arrive in Minas Tirith, they observe the guards of the citadel. Their helms were of strange shape, high crowned, with long cheek guards close fitting to the face. And above the cheek guards were set the white wings of seabirds. But the helms gleamed with a flame of silver for they were indeed wrought of mithril, heirlooms from the glory of old days. And then there's this glorious paragraph. And then wonder took him, and a great joy, and he cast his sword up in the sunlight and sang as he caught it, and all eyes followed his gaze, and behold, upon the foremost ship a great standard broke, and the wind displayed it as she turned towards the Harland. There flowered a white tree, and that was for Gondor. But seven stars were about it, and a high crown above it, the signs of a lendil that no lord had borne for years beyond count. And the stars flamed in the sunlight, for they were wrought of gems by Arwen, daughter of Elrond. And the crown was bright in the morning, for it was wrought of mithril and gold. Later we learn in the Grey Havens that Galadriel's ring Nenya was wrought of mithril, 
And earlier in The Steward and the King, we read about the beginning of the reign of King Alessar. In his time, the city was made more fair than it had ever been, even in the days of its first glory. And it was filled with trees and with fountains, and its gates were wrought of mithril and steel, and its streets were paved with white marble. Now, one cannot imagine the gates being made of actually solid mithril, because that would be greater than the GDP of the entire world, given that the mithril coat uh, had a value greater than that of the entire shire. But let's assume, you know, mithril plating or mithril details on the, the steel doors, but still fantastic. Now, in Unfinished Tales, reading in The Disaster of the Gladden Fields, we read about something else made of mithril, the Elendilmere, the star of Elendil, which was set upon a mithril fillet. Now, the original one was lost with Isildur when he was killed, and so a second was made, and that was the royal symbol of the North Kingdom. But then Aragorn, after he became king, found the original one in Orthanc and would wear it later on high days. But folks, that's it for Mithril and for today's Word Nerd Wednesday. Come back next week as we wander the wide, wild, wonderful world of words weekly on Wednesdays. And if there's a word you want to know more about, please let me know by emailing barleman at theprancingponypodcast.com. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show and get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout with me, a bonus weekly episode, and a lot more. And finally, join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times for Third Age Thursday. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Please follow or subscribe on your podcast apps, and follow at Tolkien Times on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men.